Hey guys, what's up? I'm about to get started on a project. I've got somebody here visiting me. I'm excited to show you and I'm going to explain what we're doing. But first I wanted to tell you about a very limited time offer we have going on in our shop uh, at rootsandrefuge.com. We have transitioned to South Carolina and during this period of time, Jeremiah's sister who does all the shipping for our sticker shop has still been in Arkansas. She's getting ready to go ahead and move to South Carolina next month. And so we are clearing out all of our old sticker inventory. We're doing mystery grab bags. We did this once before and it was a huge hit and they sold out really fast. So the link is down below. They're gonna be $10 grab bags and they will be any of the random stickers over the course of the last several months. Um, it's We're trying to clear it all out because the less we have to move the better. Um, uh, the link is down below for that. As always, it's always in the description of our videos. Now, let's go do some gardening. Bear, you ready to garden? You ready to garden? Hey, it's my mom. Hey. Hey, mom. I'm in South Carolina. Yay. Hey. <laughs> All right, guys. So, right now, we are faced with the task of starting lots of new gardens completely from scratch in areas where there's never been gardens before. And any time that you are going to be growing in a new space, you have a couple of options and things that you can do in order to ready that space to grow your garden. Now, of course, with moving comes a lot of boxes. We have been saving all of the cardboard over here that was savable. Anything that is slick, uh, heavily printed, anything like that, you don't want that. But any of this plain cardboard is great. We've stripped most of the tape off of it. Um, any sort of, most of the labels. You want most of that stuff off because that's not going to break down in your garden as fast as this cardboard is. Now you got to think when you're preparing a garden space, you're going to put all this nice soil and compost and all these great nutrients on the ground. And then you're going to make sure it's watered and taken care of. You are going to create the best possible place for a plant to live. Now, a weed, it's not necessarily, weed does not mean bad plant. This is not synonymous with, you know, ew, bad weed. A weed is just a plant growing where you don't want it to grow. Exactly, a definition of weed <laughs> is an undesirable plant. It's a plant where you don't want it to be. So a lot of times people will see me like weeding my gardens out and they'll see me pulling something out like purslane. Where some places people are growing purslane, on purpose, they're cultivating that. They're buying it started at the store. Whereas in Arkansas, now I'm not seeing any purslane here, but in Arkansas, I could go at any point in time and harvest two trash bags of it out of the yard. It grew everywhere. I see people, people will comment to me when they see me like painstakingly trying to grow nasturtiums where they live in California and nasturtiums are like weeds to them. So everybody's got their definition of what a weed is. One man's trash is another man's treasure and one man's desirable plant is another man's weed. The point being when you're creating a garden you are going to have plants that are going to try to go grow in your space that you're creating that you don't want there. And in order to prepare a new garden space, you need to do something to go ahead and clear out what is currently growing there. And right now, this is just grass. Um, in some cases, if you're preparing, you might have other forms of weeds or grass. And a lot of people go in and they just till right off the bat. I actually don't like tilling to prepare my garden spaces. I will occasionally, but it's not something that I automatically go to. So, Right now I'm laying this cardboard down with my mom and we are getting this space ready and all we're going to do is just layer up the cardboard and then some soil. The reason I like using cardboard is one, like in the case of right now, it doesn't cost me any extra money. I've got all this cardboard from having just moved and a lot of times we do have cardboard because we get deliveries, we get, you know, packages from online. So I usually save boxes. Um, a lot of boxes in order to use in my garden. And I put a layer of cardboard down when I put a raised bed in, when I put a new garden bed in like this, if I'm trying to get a new space ready, a layer of cardboard, because this is actually going to break down. It will compost underneath the soil. And the reason I'm going ahead and getting this ready, even though I'm not ready to plant this, is I want to get this cardboard down and I'm going to start piling soil on top of this and I'll edge up around the edges, but this is going to create a barrier to kill this grass that's underneath here. Watch out, I'm gonna go right there. Bears, like right in the way. Yeah. We don't want to plant a garden dog bear. This box still has a good deal of tape on it. Oh, well this one can come up because it's gonna cover. Look at that. Oh, there's a cricket! Jackson! <laughs> he won't, 
I don't think you'll give Newt the cricket that's out here. He says they have to come from the store. Should I make this, should I make this kind of taper in on the end or do you think that I should make it flare out again? Um, oh, well, I guess tapered in's not bad. But I'm gonna put the walkway is gonna come out here and I'm gonna put those like I have some raised garden beds and some different things I'm gonna put where you walk past them here in the front. Yeah. So this is gonna be an in-ground like f ornamental okay. flower yeah. bed and then I'm gonna have my vegetables set up here for this winter. But yeah you could just curve off come like this yeah. and then just curve off. This is gonna be like our parking space we're yeah. graveling over here yeah. so it's gonna have a walkway here. Yeah. I don't know. We don't have curbs anywhere. Maybe an angle. Just an angle. Well, I was thinking about potentially coming out and then back in and then out by the steps again, but I don't know if that will look well, weird. And if you're talking about an arch, then you will have a curve. Yeah. So just already we laid this cardboard down the other day and it's been rained on, but you can kind of see here that it's already starting to kill back a lot of the grass that's down here. And what will happen when you put any sort of cover down like this, as you can see here, do you all see all of these seedlings? Um, it traps a lot of warmth in and it forces the seeds that are in the soil to go ahead and sprout. But then they don't have any light. You see how leggy and puny these are all? Kind of see there. Um, and without light, they'll die. What that does is it creates what's called a sterile seed bed. Now, cardboard itself doesn't always fully do the trick um, if you are just lay cardboard down. It does kill a lot of stuff, but the fact that I'm gonna pile soil up on this cardboard means that all of that underneath there, it will be forced to sprout and then it won't be able to go anywhere. But the, the benefit of cardboard is that it does break down and eventually um, you're able to grow through it. This is why I don't really like um, weed fabrics. If you go buy, like, buy the roll at garden centers or big box stores, you can buy these weed fabrics. And they're, they're okay for some purposes. I like weed fabrics for walkways. I like weed fabrics for places that you want weeds to not come through over a long period of time. But if you put weed fabrics on the bottom of a bed like this, I'm not putting a ton of soil on these beds. This is not gonna be a raised bed. Um, I'll probably pile maybe like six to eight inches of soil on top of this. So when I go to plant in this here in probably like a few weeks to a month, this will be fairly broken down underneath here. But what will happen, Bear, can I use your puddle to demonstrate? So right now this has got some water on it. Um, and what will happen after I pile soil up on here and I'm making sure I'm watering it, is that this is quickly gonna break down and when I go to plant in this, I can just stick my shovel down in it and it's gonna break straight through this cardboard. So when I go to plant like any shrubs, I'm planning on putting a couple of like small trees or hydrangeas and some different things up here. I'll probably be planting like gallon size plot pots, but that's why I'm going ahead and preparing this now because that cardboard will be broken down enough even in just a few weeks of having wet soil on top of it that I can dig straight through it without any trouble. I don't think we had one back here. here. When you get up there, holler and I'll turn it on. Okay, cool. I was trying to tell those rain clouds to come water my, my cardboard, but they're not listening. They're blowing in the other direction. So you wanna get your cardboard tape free, lay it down and then wet it real good. Cause that's gonna start the process of this breakdown. It's gonna stick it to the ground so it doesn't blow off. Uh, down there we have some boards laying on them. We're actually bringing the load of soil for this in tomorrow. Um, so I may throw something heavy on top of this, maybe stick these plants back over here. Uh, just so this doesn't blow away if we get any wind. But you just wanna get the cardboard down and get it pinned, get it wet. And ideally, you put soil on it pretty soon after you lay it down um, to do a no-dig bed. But if you're not in the position to put the soil on it right away, just come out and hose it down every day. Just keep it wet because that's going to start that process of uh, one, keeping the soil moist underneath with, with the warmth is going to force the germination of those seeds, but also it's going to keep the cardboard stuck to it and start weakening the cardboard because we do want this to break down pretty soon. Now right here in this box, I have two boxes here. I bought two of these. Um, I have some silage tarps. When you watch me garden, I do ask that you keep in mind, I do a little bit of everything. And the reason I do that is for you guys. I do my YouTube channel, like this is my job. It has really become my job. And so 
while for most people there's no reason why you would need to do 10 different types of gardening I mean you pick something that works for you and you can stick with it um, I like to try a little bit of everything to be able to give feedback share my experience with it because I think that makes me a better teacher so I actually ordered a couple of silage tarps and silage tarps essentially do a similar thing that cardboard does it's just black plastic and you lay it out on a garden space now many people till after putting silage tarps down um, I am actually going to be using these silage tarps out in our pasture and it's an area where it just has a really thick grass currently and I'm going to use these to create a sterile, sterile seed bed and when it's hot like this um, a silage tarp can create a sterile seed bed in like three weeks or something like that I think it takes up to six throughout the winter but it's black plastic the light cannot permeate through it of course it's going to trap a lot of heat it's going to force germination and it's going to kill off the plants that are underneath it now with this unlike the cardboard you don't leave it under soil you pick this back up and then do what you're going to do at that point the reason i'm using these is because i'm covering some really large spaces that i'm not going to have enough cardboard to cover some people will use silage tarps and then go behind that and till it and for me i'm i prefer not to till um, because by layering on and doing no dig you actually allow the soil to keep a lot of soil structure uh, you allow a lot of the life to stay in the soil and a lot of times there might be seeds in your soil a little deeper than they're going to germinate and by tilling those you're actually bringing up weed seeds that otherwise just wouldn't grow but I wanted to try the silage tarps it's not something that I've ever really used before I have used uh, like a billboard Board tarp that I got for free um, in a very similar fashion uh, the downside of silage tarps is they're just expensive um, and so you see them used more for like market gardeners market farmers but a lot of times for home gardeners it just doesn't make sense to spend that much money on the front end spending you know sometimes upwards of a couple hundred dollars plus um, on tarps to prepare your garden space because you're just growing for your own use but that is where cardboard comes in and it really is a good option even though these storm clouds didn't rain on us they did just drop the temperature about 10 degrees and yep. then this is seed pod yeah Here, that's that milkweed uh -huh. so mom brought me some plants so this is the comfrey that came out of my garden in arkansas um she brought me a couple of the little chunks she took off of that she was protecting my plants for me because I didn't want to neglect them and kill them in my move here are the trees that I took if you guys remember I'll put a link to the video where I went down uh, when my grandparents house was sold and I took some acorns from the trees that my great-grandfather planted in his house and um, and so I'm going to grow these up and plant them here. So mom's been taking care of those. They've about doubled in size since I last saw them. And these are actually, these are from my, yeah, these are from my lilies. No, irises. Um, yeah, so these were some of my irises in my garden, which, which we took. All of this was your garden except for this. Yeah. Yeah, we got that once at a greenhouse. All these were your yep. greenhouse. This was your um, dahlias. Tubers, yep. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yep. And then this. Yep, she There's just one brought, more of those. Yeah, she just brought all of these. She just brought all of this from Arkansas whenever she came. So mom and I went to a local nursery today and I did not bring home. Well, no, that's not true. I did bring home two plants. They were on the clearance rack. They were a dollar <laughs> each. That doesn't even count. I did not bring home any big plants. They were just really pretty, but I, they needed me. They didn't even rescue them. But I was getting ideas for the front of the house here. And um, we found some really pretty stuff. This one, um, it was actually a type of weeping red bud that stays really like narrow and tall. Um, golden Cirrus, I think it was called. I have it written down on my phone. Um, but yeah, like really pretty. And I'm thinking of that. I'm thinking some hydrangeas. And also I have several iris rhizomes that I ordered that should be in any day. And my plan is when we build our fence down by the pond, I want to line that with irises, but it's not ready yet. So I'm probably going to go ahead and put those in because just like with a lot of things like irises, they're going to start multiplying as soon as you get them in a good spot. And you can always pull them up and move them. And if I take those iris rhizomes and put them here now, by the time that spot is ready, I could have twice as many rhizomes to put down there. I am planning to do some videos. This, I know this is more vloggy because my mom's here with me and I'm 
you know spending time with her but i am planning to do some more videos soon like more of a step-by-step -step tutorial on like how to start a garden bed from scratch with silage sharp how to start a garden bed from scratch with cardboard um this we're getting in up here we're getting some soil in tomorrow and i'll show you guys that but i'm getting some vegetable areas ready and raised beds to just get some stuff going soon and i'm gonna go ahead and get some in-ground space going just because i was talking to maya we're having to buy all our food like at the store for the most part you know i've been going to local markets and stuff but I am really used to being able to go out in our yard and at least get 25 to 30% of what we're eating. Like I can usually go out and get at least the sides of our meal, you know, go to our freezer and go, to, go out into the yard and get at least a, a significant amount. And so to have so little growing in our yard is a little bit um, unusual. And I started talking to him and I was like, you know, I could throw some silage tarps down, get some areas ready. I could grow a lot of roots. I could grow a lot of leafy things. I could get a lot of food going. And he just said, fine, just do it. Um, that sounds pretty simple, and it is. And I'm gonna share it with you guys and show you how relatively simple it is to get started on some quick gardens. Um, and that should tide me over until we can build the gardens for the spring. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Y'all can follow more with us, but I get asked a lot about what do you put down under your gardens. And I've had a lot of people ask me since they started, saw us start on this, what are you putting that cardboard down for? And I wanted to show you how that works. I bless you guys. Until next time. <laughs>